Hi, everyone. Thank you for your interest in learning more about Federal Motor Carrier's Safety Administration's recent revised guidance on personal conveyance. My name is Latanya Mims. I'm the Transportation Specialist in the Enforcement Division at the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. And I'm Chad Lagerway, a safety investigator out of the Washington State Division Office. During this presentation, the following topics will be discussed. What personal conveyance is, why FMCSA revised the guidance, the motor carrier's and driver's responsibilities, EODs and personal conveyance, and at the conclusion of this presentation, we'll discuss proper and improper use of personal conveyance. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Personal conveyance is the movement of a commercial motor vehicle for personal use while a driver is off duty. It is important to keep in mind that in order to operate under personal conveyance, the driver must be off duty, meaning the driver is relieved from work and all responsibility for performing work by the motor carrier. Now, Chad will go over the change to the guidance and the motor carrier's responsibility. Take it away, Chad. The revision of this guidance is intended to improve flexibility and ensure consistent application among industry and law enforcement. The revised guidance includes a list of proper and improper use of personal conveyance and emphasizes that a vehicle can operate as personal conveyance when laden, a provision that was prohibited for the past 20 years. The focus of this revision to the personal conveyance guidance is the intent of the movement. Does the movement of the vehicle contribute to the motor carrier's operational readiness and is the movement personal in nature? Later in this presentation, we will apply the focus of the revision to some examples of proper use of personal conveyance and improper use of personal conveyance. While not required, if a motor carrier chooses to allow their drivers to operate their commercial motor vehicles under personal conveyance, then they can develop a company policy that either reflects FMCSA's guidance or apply more restrictive guidance such as distance restrictions or laden restrictions. Motor carriers and drivers should keep in mind that operating under personal conveyance does not relieve them from the responsibility of operating the commercial motor vehicle safely. I'm going to turn it back over to LaTanya. Thanks, Chad. So now we're going to go over the driver's responsibility. Drivers are required to record any time operating as personal conveyance on their record of duty status. This can be done in a couple of different ways, which we will discuss in the next slide. As mentioned earlier, the driver is not relieved from the responsibility of operating the vehicle safely, and the driver must comply with the hours of service rules. This includes driving while fatigued. What this means is that if a driver is too tired to operate a commercial motor vehicle, regardless of the number of hours of service he or she has, then the driver should not operate said commercial vehicle. If the driver is subject to the ELD rule, then the driver has the option of using the personal conveyance feature on the ELD. The motor carrier must enable this feature before a driver can use it. If a carrier allows the driver to use the commercial motor vehicle for personal conveyance but opts out of the ELD personal conveyance feature, then the driver must make an annotation on the ELD at the beginning and end of the personal conveyance on the off-duty line. Earlier in this presentation, the focus of the revised personal conveyance was mentioned. Keeping those elements in mind, these next couple of slides will discuss the proper use and improper use of personal conveyance. This first example of proper use of personal conveyance illustrated on this slide is a common issue. The movement of a commercial motor vehicle from a shipper or receiver to a place to obtain required rest after the driver has exhausted their hours of service can be identified as personal conveyance. If and only if the driver stops at the first available rest stop to obtain that required restorative rest. Time spent traveling from a driver's in route lodging, such as a motel or truck stop to restaurants and entertainment facilities, is proper use of personal conveyance. And commuting can be identified as personal conveyance if it is to and from a driver's terminal from his or her residence, between trailer drop lots and driver's residence, and between work sites and his or her resident. This slide identifies improper use of personal conveyance. While the revised guidance allows drivers to drive from a shipper or receiver to a place of paying rest after the driver has exhausted their hours of service, the driver must use the first available rest stop. The driver cannot bypass rest stops to get to one that is closest to the next dispatch location. 
deadheading cannot be identified as personal conveyance as the movement contributes to a motor carrier's operational readiness, and it is not personal in nature, but at the request of the motor carrier. So we hope you found this presentation helpful in understanding the revised personal conveyance guidance 